Before we start this video, a large thank you to Connor and Eduardo for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to learn how to put our game on Steam. But before I start, I ask that you kindly check out the video in the description by AeroDev. Uh, he is where I got all of this information from a couple years back. So if you want to go leave a like on his video, that would be greatly appreciated. If you even want to go watch his video over mine, that's cool too. His information is great, but everything I learned, I basically learned from that video. All right, so before you make your Steam developer account, what you should know is there's going to be three main things that you're probably going to want information on. First one, is going to be a thing called a depot. So D-E-P-O-T. What this is, is just a collection of files. Most games will only have one depot. Why would you have two? Um, well, if you needed a certain set of files for say a different operating system, and you needed another set of files for another operating system, then that would be a reason to have several depots to my knowledge. Uh, also, I could be mistaken here, but I believe it's also for things like DLC content, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But you don't need to worry about that if you're watching the series, because chances are you're making a singular game, uh, probably for a PC, and all you need to do is create one of these, but there are resources on it if you need to create additional ones. So, the Depot will just be basically all the files of your game. Next, there is Builds. Now, a build is basically a different version of your game. Uh, this will be like, as you update the game, you're going to change your build. So for example, if you launch a demo like I did with Nephilim and you're steadily adding content to it, well, my first build might be 0.1 and then I might add some new enemies and I'll call that 0.12 or 0.2. Now I upload that build and I can make that build live for everybody. Or alternatively, you can use a branch, which is the final topic we're going to talk about before we jump in. And a branch is just basically different versions of the game that will be assigned to the players or a private beta test um, or a developer test. So for example, you could upload several builds, but one build could be unstable. You don't want your players to have this unstable build. So what you do is you put that build on a different branch. So you have your public branch, which gets your stable build, and then you have your beta branch or your private branch, which can get your unstable build. So to reiterate very quickly, we have your depot, which is just a large collection of files, which is just your game, basically. And then within that, we get into builds, which are just different versions of your game as it updates and changes. And then we get into branches, which again is just a selection of which build people get depending on which branch they're in. So you can have a public and private branch or a stable and unstable. That's really all the information you need to know to get started. So the first thing you want to do now is get a Steamworks developer account. So you can actually turn your own account into one if you want, or you can create a new account for it, which is what Steam recommends, but you can change this later. You can still set your developer name to whatever you want if you use your own Steam account. Don't worry about that. It won't be visible on any of the pages that it's linked on where you're linked as the developer. So basically, you're then going to have to fill out some information about yourself, whether you're a company or an individual. You don't need to worry about uh, any of that because it can be changed later if you decide to form a company. But a lot of people right now, that's not something that they're thinking about too much because they're probably in the earlier stages of it. There is some tax information there that can be intimidating for some people. It's a lot more easy to understand for a U.S. citizen, but, but don't worry, there are resources if you are not from the U.S. I'm not from the U.S. So once you have all of that done, you need to pay Steam a direct fee of $100 to host your app or game. This is a one-time payment, and once it's there, you have that slot to host your game and add and remove builds and branches and whatever as you please. So even if your game is free and you don't plan to charge for it, Steam will still charge you $100 to keep it on their platform. The good news is I've been told that if your game makes more than $1,000, you can get the fee paid back to you entirely. So with all this set up, you should then see a your store presence thing in the corner here. And basically in order to get your Steam page live, you need to check off all these boxes. And that's not something I will spend a lot of time on because again, Valve does a pretty good job of telling you all the information you need here if you click these things and kind of follow around the pages. And I try to keep these videos as lean as possible for you guys so we can jump into the programming aspect of stuff. But if you are confused or you get stuck, please drop me a comment. I've went through this process before. I can try to help you out to the best of my ability. 
But also, if you're a person watching this and you feel nervous, just take a breath, take your time. You got this. Don't worry. It just looks intimidating because you don't understand it. It will not become intimidating if you sit with it for a while. You don't need to do it all in 10 seconds. You will get through it. And one more note on the Steam page before we move on. You actually need to make specific sizes for pictures. Uh, for example, small capsule, main capsule. But Steam will actually give you all the measurements of them. So if you have a Photoshop program or something along the lines of that, you can uh, set it up. And I believe there are size templates out there that will just make the process a little bit easier for you. But yeah, definitely take your time to make sure your pictures look nice and appealing because that is the biggest thing to grab people to click on your Steam page. Unless, of course, you're just doing this for fun and you just want to get it up there so you can test it. Don't worry about it. If you're not planning to do a series release, obviously it's not so important. But definitely do not rush this portion of the process of launching your game. All right, cool. You made an account and you have a Steam page. Maybe it's not done yet, but you have the general process of it started. How do you upload a game? Well, you first have to download Steamworks SDK. You can get the latest version, and this is just basically their tool that allows you to upload whatever project you have on your device to your Steam profile, and then you can manage it there and set up branches like we talked about earlier, and builds, and yada, yada, yada. You can find a download link for SDK on your Steamworks homepage after you have an account. So after you download it, extract the files, go to the tools folder and then the content builder folder. So it should look like SDK tools, content builder, and then your content. Now you can make a folder here for any of your depots. So like I said, most people have one. I just called my Nephilim, but this is where your game files are going to be. This is where you're going to build your game to when you're done building it in Unity, basically. All right. After you have a build of your game in that folder, you want to go to the tools folder and you should see a zip file called steam pipe gui extract that and that should get you the tool you need now to upload your project to your steam profile online after you extract it launch the steam pipe gui.exe okay now the important part at the top you're going to see your app id you need to get that whatever your app id is on your project you can find this on your steamworks page it is important that you get that right Next is the build description. This is just what's going to pop up when you upload your build. So if you want to have like, you know, like I said before, multiple builds, you could say this is the unstable build or this is a private test build for developers or this is a public build. This is just a comment that you will see when you upload it. So under that, there's a depot list where you want to basically add all the depots you want to upload. Like I said, most people have one. We just made a folder for it in the content builder slash content. Mine is just called Nephilim. So just basically put that there. The depot ID should be correct automatically if you only have one depot. If for some reason the ID is not there, go to your Steam page and then go down to your Depots tabs and then you will be able to find the ID on that page. And then at the bottom, you also need to add the path to your Content Builder folder. And lastly, you got to fill in the account details here, your Steam login of the developer account that you want this to be uploaded to. Oh, and I almost forgot, if this is the first time you're uploading a build for your game, you have to hit the Generate VDFs button. This just creates some config files that are needed to upload your project. You only need to do this once, just the first time. The only time you hit this again is if you're adding additional depots or like for some reason these config files get deleted. But yeah, other than that, you don't need to press it anymore. Okay, cool. Press upload and you're probably going to get the Steam Guard thing uh, if you have that set up and you need to confirm that. And then you'll see this little command prompt thing pop up and it will show you that it is uploading your project to your Steamworks page. So eventually if this works, the command prompt will disappear. You'll know if it uploaded because you will see a success message over here in your SDK tool, your Steam tool thing that we just used to upload it. Mildly annoying note, if you're using the same Steam account as your Steam games that you usually play on, uh, you'll notice that it will sign you out of your computer, but not really. You're knocked offline. The only way to get back online is to exit Steam and restart it, at which point it will ask you to re-sign in. Okay, now Steam has to know how your game is going to be open, so you need to go to the Installation tab here on your Steamworks page, and then go to the Launch Options here and add a new launch option. So unless you're doing something special, the only thing you need in this tab is the name of the executable file. That's it. So just add that in there and you're good. If for some reason your executable file is inside a folder within your build, you need to add the whole path, not just the name of the .exe file. Then you need to go to the Publish tab and publish the changes so the new launch options work. Don't worry, this will not publish your game. Now you're able to set your builds as you want. And if you go back to the Builds section, you will see there, there is a Set Build Live on Branch, and you can choose to set it to Default, or you can create a new branch if you'd like. Default will be available to everybody defaultly who has access to your app slash package, whatever you want to call it, to your game. Once confirmed, hit Preview Change, and then hit Set Build Live Now. If your build is on the default branch, it's going to ask you to confirm it via your Steam Guard app. 
Um, if it's on a private branch that requires a password, like a beta branch, it should just push automatically. And again, to reiterate, this does not mean that random people can play your game. This just means that people who have access to your game can now play it. So if you gave someone keys or have developer keys, uh, where you give everyone who's making your game access to it, then they can do that right now. And if no one has access rights, it should just be you who can download and play the game. Now, again, if you're attempting to download this on Steam and you had it running in the background when the SDK tools were open, just exit Steam and reopen it if you're using the same Steam account. Otherwise, it will not download an update for your game. Uh, so just go ahead and reset it. So what if you want to update your game? Well, it's super easy. Just do a build of your game like before. Go ahead and launch the tool again where we uploaded it. Upload it and then go back to your Steam page. And you should see here under the builds, you have your new build and you'll see that it does not have a branch. If you hit your default branch or your beta slash private branch, it will simply replace the one that already contains your default or beta. Again, for default branches, it will make you confirm. Uh, and for my private branch, at least for me, it never asks me to confirm. Okay, now on to the thing that probably matters most to most people. What if you want to give access to your friends, family, or people to help you test the game? Well, you want to go to a place where you can request keys. It's on the Steam page here, and I'm probably showing it on the video if Future Seb has edited this correctly. So basically, you submit a request to Steam to give you some keys for your game. You can get them for testers or for other developers. I have never had a request denied by Steam, just saying, so you can get... Quite a few of these pretty early if you need, but you probably only need a handful anyway. Steam is usually pretty fast with this, like I usually get them within a few hours also. And also I highly encourage you guys to make another branch if you're testing with people, but also have a public launch happening. Like if you're launching a demo and you're, you're developing as you launch it, like I'm doing, have a public version that people can access that's more stable. Uh, and as, as you update new features, have a private one with a password that only a few people have access to that are more, you know, aware that this is being actively developed and this is gonna be buggy because that's a great way to play test with your friends uh, without actually annoying people who want to play a stable version of your game. So originally, this is the part where I was going to download Face Punch and show you guys how to actually get this working so you can connect with your friends immediately on Steam. However, since I realized that this is probably the point where most people don't even have a Steam account and they've just watched this video and it's going to take them a little bit to set up, I think it's better if we did that next week. I know this video was very fast, and if you do feel intimidated by this process, don't worry, you got it. Just take it step by step. It doesn't need to be done in 10 seconds. There are resources. If you have trouble, genuinely give me a ping in my Discord server. If I'm around, I'm around in the evenings most of the time, I'll do my best to answer your questions. I've done this process before. Once you get going, it's not so scary. And if my video is a bit too fast for you guys, I'm going to link two videos by AeroDev below. One is how to upload a Steam game step by step. One is how to create a Steam account step by step. He goes into every nitty gritty detail, which I tend not to do in something like this because I know most people watch this series for the actual game development. Valve's resources are also pretty good, so it is pretty straightforward once you get the ball rolling. Okay, gentlemen, that is it for me. I hope you all, as always, have an extremely lovely weekend. Again, if you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments or at me in the Discord. If you at me in the Discord, I will eventually see it. But yes, at this point, I am rambling. Thank you so much, my patrons. I appreciate each and every one of you. Genuinely, it is why the series exists. You have my sincerest thanks. Thank you to the people who take the time to like and comment on this video. You are the best. Now, have a very lovely weekend. I'll see you guys next week. We'll get back to coding. We're going to do face punch, and we're going to learn how to connect other people with our game on Steam. See you then.